All right, guys, a little bit of a weird video, I guess, here today, but what we're going to do is uh, go back once again to a previous video, the, uh, uh, what was it, diagnosing a leak, a lag, and a light, something like that. And uh, in that video, you will remember one of the things was a light that was a service charging system light on a 2014 or 2013 Ford Edge and the obvious call after doing the diagnostics was an alternator and uh, replace the alternator five days later vehicle comes back on a tow truck with uh, dead battery and service charging system light on again now i will give a spoiler here we did go ahead and fully investigate that at www.schrodingersboxqm.com my paid content channel at only three dollars and 49 cents a month where we did an ex explosive diagnosis of the system to see if we overlooked anything and I will give you the spoiler if you haven't gone and looked at that and don't intend to if you do intend to cover your ears or uh, skip forward 10 seconds all right here it is uh, it was a bad alternator out of the box we confirmed it 100 percent so uh, we went through extensive diagnosis and that was conclusively proven and as a matter of fact over a week later we are having no issues with that car um, but also on that video was a lag and the lag was on a 2014 Infiniti QX60 where it had some kind of strange phenomenon that I found on the test drive that confirmed the customer complaint of some um, binding of the rear wheel when you make turns it felt like the brakes were grabbing the rear wheel but only when you made turns the basically on that one again a fairly simple diagnosis um, ended up draining some fluid out of the differential after checking and ruling out all other possibilities it had to be something with the differential and we uh, poured out a whole ton of metal from the differential this is the differential from that vehicle and uh, what I did was I went back to the junkyard and asked them if I could uh, pay back my core fee and collect the differential because there is some important information I want to share with you because the day uh, that that video was released, the leak, a lag, and a light video, I was contacted by this guy, King Serg or King Surge, uh, who is responsible for today's video content because... What King Serg pointed out to me is that there is actually a technical service bulletin that was available for Nissans and Infinities with this particular differential. And it actually works in a way that I was completely unaware of. And uh, had I drained the fluid out of that differential and didn't have a whole ton of metal come out with it, uh, what would I have done? Well, it turns out that uh, there is the possibility you can have similar to this issue and not have the differential be bad. And it is because there is an electronic component to that differential that I was unaware of. Thus, the reason that I went back to the junkyard to recover my core return on the differential. So this is the bad differential from that vehicle. And uh, the purpose was I wanted to learn more about how this electronic uh, system works. It's called an electronic coupler. And uh, this, this thing works completely different than what I was expecting. And uh, there are some variables to it that I wanted to make you guys aware of. So this is a little bit of a public service announcement. And then over on the paid channel, uh, at some point, I'm going to get this vehicle back because I found it needs rear brakes when I replaced the differential. And by the way, the vehicle is running perfectly fine, so it was definitely the right call. Uh, but it, it's possible it could have been a simpler call because it could have only been the electronic part uh, of the differential if the whole differential wasn't bad. Um, so I just kind of lucked out in a way that that was the case. What I wanted to do is go over a little bit about the technical service bulletin and how this thing works and just kind of get you a general update on it so that uh, if you run into that same situation and the differential itself is good, um, you will have some indications on how you can diagnose uh, if you just need the electronic component. Turns out, by the way, if you're going to do a used component, it's cheaper to just replace the whole thing anyway. 
but um, you still, you know, you know how this channel is. We, we don't want to just replace things like hacks, you know. Um, we want to understand these systems and properly diagnose exactly what's wrong and then give the customer a choice of uh, how they want to proceed. So uh, let's start with uh, how this thing actually works. So out of the, uh, I'm sure, a couple of dozen or so differentials that I have changed over my time, anytime you see the connector on there, it's always some kind of speed sensor or something for the odometer or something like that. That is not the case on this particular uh, Nissan style transmission that I believe came to fruition sometime around 2012 or so. And what it is, is this back half of the differential, this part here, uh, other than the flange, is actually called an electronic coupler. The way this differential works is this is a four-wheel drive vehicle when it has to be. And when it is a four-wheel drive, it is a four-wheel drive only how much it needs to be. So in other words, what this connector is for is for a coupler that engages the four-wheel drive at certain degrees and applies more four-wheel drive uh, as it is needed. So I believe the range is somewhere from 20, per, strike that, 0%, uh, because normally the vehicle operates two-wheel drive if it does not need four-wheel drive. But then based on all kinds of sensors from the body control module, including vehicle speed, if the vehicle is turning, wheel speed sensor data, uh, yaw, all kinds of data, what it will do is it will engage the four-wheel drive as needed from a 20% contribution all the way up to a full 100% making the vehicle a full four-wheel drive. And um, it's by the degrees of movement of this coupler that it engages more or less of that four-wheel drive. Now, that said, this is the technical service bulletin that I found that uh, King Surge led me to. It's actually one of the most disappointing ones because it gives uh, very little electrical test procedures. You know, things like what kind of voltages are you looking for? Uh, is it pulse width modulated? And uh, what, what type of resistance? You know, all of that stuff that anybody else is going to look at and go, oh, screw that, I'm just going to replace the part. Um, it actually has none of that. All it really tells you is this. It describes the issue as a vibration or judder feel from the rear of the vehicle when making turns on dry roads under 40 miles an hour. I can tell you that really doesn't describe what I felt when I was driving the car. What I felt when I was driving the car is the left rear wheel was not moving and I was literally just pulling it along as if the the parking brake was locked on it. That's what it definitely felt like to me. It wasn't a vibration or a judder. Uh, but nonetheless, that's what it says here. And what you are supposed to do is you disconnect the electronic coupler at this connector here and then again drive the vehicle. And when you do that, if the problem goes away, your diagnosis would be that the electronic coupler has failed and what it tells you is to just replace the electronic coupler portion, not the whole unit, just the electronic coupler portion. You can see there's like six bolts around that you can just remove the electronic coupler part and you also don't even have to remove the differential from the vehicle to do that. So uh, that is what is stated in the technical service bulletin, uh, which is a pretty lame way of diagnosing it. But also, even worse, uh, any information that I looked up on more thorough ways of testing it, what kind of values you would look for, um, how it works electrically, uh, I was actually able to find very limited information, and that will be on the paid channel as we will go through at some point and come up with some testing methods of our own. Um, there were a couple things I was able to learn, and I will share those with you. One of them is I did get a wire diagram. I found a wire diagram here. And um, one of the things is that I, I can tell you how this doesn't work. You can clearly see this isn't some kind of a stepper motor type of thing. Uh, my guess would be that it would be pulse width modulated. That just seems blatantly obvious to me. Uh, but I can tell you, I actually don't believe, based on the, the crappy resources I've read from the factory, by the way, 
Um, I don't believe it's pulse width modulated. The way they, they say to confirm that there is operation of the unit uh, is only through amperage, not through voltage. It's only supposed to be through amperage, so I don't know whether this is voltage regulated. Um, maybe it is pulse width modulated, but I definitely don't think so. There is one value I was able to find, and we'll go ahead and measure this up right now. And what it said is that there is a resistance value that you can measure. Um, I'm using this for another car I'm diagnosing. Otherwise, of course, I would use a simple, basic $20 DVOM. You got all the fancy equipment, man. No wonder you can diagnose stuff. Oh, God. I'm, I'm just going to use a regular ohm meter, uh, just like you would use on, on a, as a matter of fact, hell. There, regular ohm meter. That's all you need to do this. Um, but now this is already on. So uh, we're just going to go to the digital meter and... Um, Gosh, I, I've got an ohm meter from Harbor Freight that I think cost me like six dollars. Um, oh yeah, on this one you have to calibrate it actually. So we're gonna calibrate this meter real quick. All right, the value that it gave—I uh, forgot what it was. It was—I I, I, believe—I believe it was approximately uh, 2.84 ohms, not approximately by my guess. That is their actual factory manual statement. It should be approximately 2.84 ohms. So we're just gonna measure that up real quick. This thing's a little slow. Um, 2.43 ohms. Obviously, if you measured that and you had an open, well, you're done, you, you've got an issue in the coupler, you're done, your diagnosis is easy. Uh, one of the problems I'm having is that that measures within spec. So here's my question, is this thing bad or not? So the problem is, is that in order to test it, uh, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to uh, drive the vehicle uh, or at least jack up all four wheels off the ground and drive the vehicle and you are supposed to look for amperage. That is actually what, what the directions physically say. It does not give a value for that amperage. So how freaking useless is that? The other thing you're supposed to do is look for continuity between either of these pins in the ground. Obviously, there should not be any, um, so we'll measure that. There is no continuity with the ground. And no continuity with the ground on the other pin. So apparently, if you've got continuity with the ground on either pin, then you have a short in there, and uh, that would suck, um, which would be interesting because you would also read amperage off of that. So yeah, whatever. Um, but uh, one of the other variables, too, is that that's all good and fine for this. But what if there's no problem with the electronic coupler here, and the issue is with the harness from the PCM that you either aren't getting the correct signal, if it's pulse width modulated, if it's voltage regulated, how, how would you measure that? And it gives no information whatsoever on that. It just says to measure for amperage and doesn't give a value, complete crap. One of the things that would occur to you, and of course it occurred to me, is just put 12 volts to this and listen if the solenoid moves. I can tell you two things. First of all, it's not gonna work that way regardless. And second, I did do that and it didn't work at all. It, it basically just, um, it, it doesn't seem to have any response. Um, but again, it's not stepper activated. So I'm not quite sure what the deal is with that, but you don't hear a solenoid click or sense any movement or anything like that. So it's not as simple to test it as just putting 12 volts to it like uh, some other solenoid. I, I'm, I'm not even entirely sure if it's a solenoid, although it is described as the um, four-wheel drive solenoid. So, um, you know, one of, the, one of the things we could do, I am just thinking about this now. Uh, let me go ahead and get uh, 12 volts to this thing, and I just, I'm just curious if there is any amperage through it. And again, this is not a finalized test or anything. I don't know that this solenoid is bad. My guess, if I had to guess, would be that the electronic coupler has been bad since they bought the vehicle because they said they've had this issue as long as they've owned the vehicle and that's been several years. And I believe that over time that wore out the differential. So I believe most likely the electronic coupler and the differential is bad. 
Um, but I don't have a way of knowing what a good reading would be on a coupler. But I do want to see if I can put some amperage through it. Let's just try that. All right, and I can also demonstrate what happens when you do put uh, 12 volts to this thing. Um, let me think how this, how this connector went. The power feed, uh, let's see. Yeah, power feed will be there. Let me switch that up. And then I'm going to just put 12 volts to this, but it's not going to do anything. I've already tried this. So it almost acts like it's a short circuit. Now, again, is that because this coupler is bad? Uh, actually, no. This is what would happen even on a good one. I'm very positive of that. Um, can't explain why it is. I'm just going to listen if I can hear. Now, you don't hear any evidence of any movement or anything in there. Um, but what I do want to do is see uh, if there's any amperage through there. So let's uh, swap this out for an amp clamp and set up for amperage. Now, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I am just going to do that on my DVOM to show that you can do this test for $6 on a 10 amp scale. And uh, we need to put this in series now. God, how long has it been since I've done an amp measurement like this? All right, just basic electrical here, guys. All right. Let's see, when we apply voltage, we get uh, four amps. And again, you don't hear any movement in there, but there is amperage. But again, it doesn't give you a value. Um, the other thing is I'm not even sure that 12 volts ever really does go to this thing, I think there's something like a maximum of 7 volts, which again would sound like it's pulse width modulated, but I'm very sure it's not. I believe that's uh, voltage regulated. Um, so I do not know how this thing works. That's the bottom line. Uh, for all I know, the electronic coupler is functioning perfectly fine, and 4 amps, is, it's certainly not a short circuit, um, and that's a lot of amperage. This looks like a pretty big component, um, you know, and I'll, I'll probably take it apart also for the pay channel as well. But uh, I don't know if 4 amps is right. I don't know if that's way too low. Um, I, I have nothing to go on. So what we're going to do is we'll have to do another video on this for you guys that are members uh, at the pay channel. And we will, uh, I know that it's working on that vehicle with the new differential and uh, coupler. Well, not new. It's a used one that we pulled from the junkyard. But I know it's working. And we're going to take some measurements from it, look at the amperage on it while it's running, and uh, draw some baselines so that if I ever run into one of these again, I do see Nissans from time to time, uh, I will be more prepared and so will you guys. So uh, kind of a weird video, but thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. We'll see you next time.